The Mega Game series of Mega Drive compilations are the unsung heroes of the Mega Drive library. Three first party heavy hitters for a budget price? Who can resist? Unfortunately, with the passage of time, their value has decreased, as some of the included games haven't aged too well when it comes to replayability, but I still think they're an important way for people exploring the Mega Drive library to own some pretty famous first party games for a smaller price, as they haven't held their value nearly as well as the individual games. Now in this video we're going to explore the original three entries in the Mega Game series, because these lay the foundation for the series. There are also three volumes of Mega Game 6, which basically mix up the offerings from the original three entries, but with the addition of Sonic the Hedgehog. There's also a lesser known entry made for Brazil and Asia called Mega Games 10, which adds California games and Flicky into the mix. There's even a Master System variant called Master Games 1, which includes Columns, Super Monaco GP and World Soccer, and is clearly made to be the Master System equivalent of Mega Games 1. But either way, the original trilogy is the focus here, so let's get to it! Mega Games 1, released in October 1992, collects Super Hang On, World Cup Italia 90, and Columns, and is definitely the weakest compilation of the bunch, but it still makes me very nostalgic. This was one of my very first Mega Drive games, and it offers a little bit of everything, and I'd regularly see the various members of my family play at least one of these titles. My dad has always ridden motorbikes and been a fan of motorsport, and he was absolutely obsessed with Super Hang On. It's not the best way to play the game with its wildly fluctuating frame rate, but it's still a solid port with a fantastic original mode that sees you take your stripped down bike through lots of short races to earn extra cash and upgrade it to perform better. It's still a shame this mode gets completely ignored in modern ports of the game. With World Cup Italia 90, we have a serviceable football game that all the lads in my family would play head-to-head. -head. It's not exactly the best football game out there, but it does the job well enough, even if the action is a little too zoomed in, that it requires an additional map of the pitch to help mitigate that. It's also a bit weird that every player in every team across the globe is a white guy with black hair, unless they're a goalkeeper. Interestingly, one of the in-game tunes from this title is also used for the main game select screen, at the start of every Mega Games game. And finally we have the great equaliser, Columns! Everyone I knew liked a bit of Columns, even my mum and aunt would play a bit of Columns. Puzzle games have always had that universal appeal, and while Columns isn't doing anything special outside of matching three gems in a row, column or diagonal, it's a difficult game to strategize due to the limited nature of its three gem scoring, so you often pull off combos by complete accident instead of being able to plan them in something like Puyo Puyo which has a little more depth. But regardless, it's a decent puzzle game that anyone can enjoy, and I think that's the game's real strength. Mega Games 2 would show up in 1993 and basically set the bar so high that the other volumes simply can't compete. This compilation includes Golden Axe, Streets of Rage and The Revenge of Shinobi, giving Mega Drive owners two of the most important beat-em-ups ever and an absolutely classic ninja action title as well. The only thing that really devalues this compilation is that every game would be superseded by a better sequel, but if you look at them in context then Mega Games 2 gives you the most bang for your buck. Golden Axe's high fantasy beat-em-up antics are extremely well remembered, with a great presentation and soundtrack, and it plays great as well. It's a little repetitive and lacks the variety a great beat-em-up needs to hold your attention, but it's still a good time and greatly improved in local co-op. The original Streets of Rage is a similar affair and clearly a good game, but you rarely need to revisit it nowadays when Streets of Rage 2 is easily available. 
It's still a great playing game regardless, and the soundtrack is absolutely killer. And finally, we have the Revenge of Shinobi, and yeah, it's another game that is perfectly serviceable, but why would you play this when Shinobi 3 is available? It's obviously a great game with lots of variety in its stage design, some really memorable boss battles and another fantastic soundtrack, so if you only have this and not Shinobi 3, you're still going to have a great time. The double jump don't half take some getting used to though. And finally, we move on to Mega Games 3, which would launch later into 1993. This compilation feels more like the original collection in that it features more variety in its game choices. We have a flying and shooting game in Super Thunderblade, an F1 racing game in Super Monaco GP, and a sci-fi themed beat-em-up in Alien Storm. Super Thunderblade marks the only title in this compilation I'd actually regard as bad. It's slow and clunky and it's difficult to see what you're firing at, and it sounds absolutely atrocious as well. The sound of your downed helicopter as it crashes and burns is one of the most abrasive things you'll hear coming out of the Mega Drive, and you hear it so frequently. Super Monaco GP is a solid little racer that performs well and has a decent handling model, but it's very difficult. There is very little room for error because if you crash even once you retire from that race. If you've got the patience to learn its intricacies, you can get a lot from this, but it's definitely more of a simulation racer and less of the arcade Sega racing thrills you come to expect from the publisher. And finally, there's Alien Storm, the unloved Sega beat-em-up that takes a more comedic approach to its overall presentation. Alien Storm features lots of nods to various sci-fi and horror films like Ghostbusters, Alien and The Thing, and it's a great time with some decent variety thanks to the silly run-and-gun sections and its chaotic shooting gallery stages. You don't hear it spoken about too often, but it really deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as Golden Axe and Streets of Rage, because it's just as fun and it has a great sense of humour. Oh, my God. 